Hello everybody, Scott Golden here with the wrestling news and views for the 26th of April, 2020. To basically two stories we're going to cover today, uh, one of which is a budding story, so a lot of the words are going to be allegedly, uh, because there is not proof one way or the other on this, and the other, more an opinion piece. If you like what you hear, please subscribe, like, comment below, I'll ask for comments about specific things in a minute. Um, and share this on social media so we can get subscriber value up. Once we are monetized, I do plan to give away some funds to uh, those struggling with the COVID virus aftermath. So help me do that. Spread the word. Anyway, um, first things first, uh, disclaimer. The subject that I'm about to talk about does bring up personal issues for me. If anything that I say feels harsh to you or you're triggered by it, I apologize in advance. However, it needs to be addressed. Um, for those unaware, Velveteen Dream, Patrick Clark, has been accused of inappropriate um, conduct with a minor via Reddit uh, post, I believe it was yesterday morning, perhaps the day before, but within the last 48 hours. Uh, there is uh, screen captures and documentation of him sending inappropriate messages to a minor and also, although I haven't seen the pictures, thankfully, supposedly pictures of an inappropriate nature sent of uh, nudity and such. And there is a sound file that is circulating the internet where supposedly he asks where she goes to school. Minor is supposedly 17 when this happens. Um, and she claims that he is also soliciting her 15 and 16 year old friend. Now. If this is true, um, WWE should make a statement immediately, especially amid all of the history of sexual allegations going back to the early 90s. This is not something the company needs now, nor ever. But if this is not true, I really do feel for the talent involved, and I now will give a few opinions on the matter. Number one. If this is to be believed, then why don't somebody, even a social justice warrior team, group of people who really care about pedophilia, this is a sensitive issue for me because I was the victim of childhood pedophilia and exploitation. So it's sensitive on a personal level. Um, if you really want to do something, put together a GoFundMe campaign to get a um, speech auditor slash speech analyzer slash... slash person who does speech pathology to analyze the small clip and put it against Clark's voice in existing footage. It's that simple. Start, start to build a case from the perspective of having that done. It would cost a, a few hundred to a few thousand dollars at most. And if this is the outrage that people say it is, it could be done within a matter of hours or days. And then that information, along with other information, could be released to the police. Um, and then they could do whatever is necessary. Simple. Now, Clark claims that his Twitter was hacked. Reasonable thought. It happens a lot. Actually happens too much in, in entertainment, wrestling, MMA, singers, dancers, actors, and the like. It's a clever thing to say when inappropriate behavior has occurred. Because my question is, how come he only noticed his Twitter was hacked when uh, something of an inappropriate nature comes out? How does he not notice before? Does he have no friends? Does he have no family? Does he have no one that cares about him until he's accused of something lurid and, and inappropriate? Doesn't make sense to me. Secondarily, if the allegations of him propositioning minors are true how come wwe hasn't made a statement i don't care it's a weekend it takes 30 seconds for a company to make a statement saying that the allegations are being thoroughly looked into it doesn't matter to me that it's a weekend that's a 24-hour company it takes 30 seconds to put something up on a web page perhaps it's there and i haven't seen it yet but as of yet i have not heard of the company taking a stand either way on this issue thirdly how come he hasn't put out a video response or something of that nature? Even if the, the, the video response is, I'm innocent, it's something. It's a public statement. 
and social media is not a sufficient public statement in 2020 when dealing with this type of issue. As someone who has been the victim of this sort of thing, it's scarring. It's horrible. And as someone who has been both in the in minorly in the music industry and the professional wrestling industry, the proclivity for attraction to minors is far higher than it should be in both industries. I know myself of three separate individuals who I will not name because A, I don't want to ruin their lives and B, I don't have enough proof to name them. But what I can say is they acted inappropriately in the direction of minor females when I was present in the room and I witnessed this. Flirtation, proposition for phone numbers, in one case, pursuit of a female who was a minor, um, in another, joking in a flirty manner that was not above board. All of these gentlemen were under 25 at the time and their intended targets ranging from 15 to 18. Because nothing illegal ever happened, I didn't press it, but needless to say, it was uncomfortable to see friends of mine flirting with minors in that way. It's a lot more prevalent because when you get to that level A, you get really lonely, and if you have that proclivity, which unfortunately a higher number of men do than, than we like to admit, some women too, let's not excuse, excuse or exclude the females in this situation, fame can make a person feel untouchable and they do stupid things. If this is a problem, it needs to be addressed. Addressing it by taking uh, Velveteen Dream, Patrick Clark, off of television until the actions are either denied or handled is appropriate. A public statement from WWE and anyone associated with the company is appropriate. The nature of a complete uh, willingness to uh, cooperate with any police investigations resulting is appropriate. The issue of sexual impropriety in national level professional wrestling goes all the way back at least to the 80s, if not before. I say to the 80s because I know of incidents in three territories in the 80s and 90s that were found to be unfounded. Well, one of them was found to be unfounded. The other two, I'm trying to remember now. Uh, Art Barr passed away but was accused of being involved with a minor. In the early 90s, Jerry Lawler was accused of being with a minder, but, but was acquitted, and third one, third one, third one. Oh, um, rock and roll Buck Zumhoff was convicted and uh, um, thusly sentenced to uh, several years in jail for having an inappropriate relationship with, I believe, either his daughter or stepdaughter for a span of years that went on for close to a decade, if not longer. All of these are, are individuals in the wrestling business who got caught up in that type of thing. Now, is it easy for male and female fans to accuse these individuals of this behavior to try and extort money or to gain 15 minutes of fame? Yes. However, does this happen more than we'd like to admit? Also, yes. Um, more than anything, I think it's important to look at both sides. I have a personal friend who was uh, sent to college on a, on a football scholarship, went to a party, um, had, had sexual relations with a minor who he did not know was a minor at the time. She presented a fake ID claiming to be 19. She was found later to be 16. He lost his scholarship because of it, was acquitted, but lost his scholarship anyway. This type of thing ruins lives. Either way, so my thoughts to everyone involved in the situation. If Patrick Clark is falsely accused, may he be acquitted and exonerated soon. If he is guilty in any way, may he be handled by the law and those who choose to enforce the law in an expedited form. Secondarily, uh, there is uh, content out there, I believe, as, as, a resolve, as a result of the investor's call where Vince McMahon once again made a complete yahoo of himself, claiming that the reason that the raw ratings are down is because they are attempting to get new talent over with the audience and that the ratings will rise in accordance with the uh, overness of the talent. Now, going to borrow a line from a 
uh, Billy Joel song from the early 80s or late 70s, Honesty. Such a lonely, and lonely word, but mostly what we need from you. Vince, do you even know how to be honest at this point? I don't think so. The reality is, there has not been a mainstream overstar in conservatively 10 years, if not longer. John Cena and Batista, the last ones who were at that level, at least to my estimation. Fact of the matter is, they have not done sufficiently to build up mainstream stars. Daniel Bryan hmm, was built up to that level, however, was not given complete push to be able to be the star he could have been due to his size, but there was at least a monicum of effort to give him a few moments of glory uh, in the, well, about six or seven years ago. That being said, he never went as far as he could go either. So, Vince, why not tell the truth? It's much more becoming of you with your stockholders, and that is we haven't found the formula for this generation of fans to find what works for them. We're still working on it. We're using metrics. We're doing what we can. We're having uh, petting sessions with rabbits. Who knows what we're doing, but we're doing something to try to get to a point where we have more stars that are connecting with our ever-dwindling fan base. And if you had the ability to connect, the fan base wouldn't be dwindling. The reality is we've never been in this position before. So the proper statement is we as a company in, in our, since they incorporated, I believe, in 1982, 92, 02, 12, that's 30, 22 would be 40 years. So in our almost 40-year history, we've never been in this situation before and we're not adapting as well as we would like. Again, honesty. What a novel concept. That level of honesty could also be useful in helping the fans to believe what the man says. But instead, his ego-driven rants about stars not being over and putting new talent out there is a cover for, I don't want to admit that the 30, 40, 50 write writers that I've hired have been neutered and castrated to the point where they're ineffective. Because it's not their fault. If he's not allowing talent to get over because he has issues with how they look, how they walk, how they talk, how they proceed to brush their teeth, whatever they do, that is his personal quirk and issue and should be addressed as such. However, the average stockholder that only cares about the value of their stock and really doesn't care about his nuances and idiosyncrasies wouldn't know that in reality the reason this exists is because the company hasn't done proper building of a star in over a decade. Somebody needs to make people aware at a national level because on some level, why would you waste money on a stock that, yes, the stock has more value than it used to, but that's because of television rights, not because they are portraying characters in story arcs that are compelling or because the characters that they are portraying are connecting on a mainstream level. Is it possible for people to get over on a mainstream level anymore? Don't know, but we should still be trying nonetheless. In any event, the, the narcissistic tendency of McMahon along with the insulation from reality that is provided by his inner circle, is creating a situation where the entire company looks bad from a stock portfolio level. For an outside investor to hear that we are putting over new talent, the question would be, why haven't we done this before? Also, what is the trajectory for that new talent to be, quote, over, a term that a non-wrestling fan will not know, to a sufficient point where we should be able to see uh, economic improvement in the stock? Notice this question isn't answered because they don't have an answer because they're not really doing that. Also, worth mentioning that the reduction in house shows that has been talked about is a great way to save money, but in reality, the, the, progr the programming without fans is proving that there is no adaptability, there is no functional adaptation to the product because, truthfully, Vince doesn't care enough to present a product that would be more compelling during the middle of the COVID virus, which he still refuses to allow himself or his announcing staff to mention on television, thus making him look out of touch and completely uh, inept. Yes, it sounds like I have a personal problem with the man, but it's not what you think. My problem is that he holds the key to the continuation of the wrestling business as a whole until he passes away. And with this, be with this being the fact, because the majority of the mainstream marketplace share across the world is WWE-related, meaning most people know what WWE is and very little know who other companies such as AEW, Ring of Honor, the NWA, and various other companies, who they are on a, on a large scale, 
He is the only representation that professional wrestling has on a global community level. Therefore, when he makes stupid statements that affect the business, he's affecting everyone, including personal friends of mine and people that don't deserve to lose their jobs or have their um, families you know, put in dangerous situations because of his ego. The fact remains he could have cut the stock dividend, explaining that it was more important for him to take care of his staff and not have to remove anybody from their positions or jobs. But in reality, that would ha me mean that he'd have to have a level of compassion that, that also encompasses the fact that the flaws that he has within his, within his own philosophy hinder his talent from getting over. To admit that would be to admit that he's human. To admit that would mean that he makes mistakes, two things that McMahon has refused over the last almost 40 years to admit anywhere publicly. Now, he had satire in the SmackDown segment on um, Friday about the mistakes he's made with Triple H's career. But that was almost tongue-in-cheek to make fun of the internet fan, the hardcore fan, but in reality, the majority of mainstream fans probably feel the very same way about the WWE product. If you don't believe me, then I would say, why aren't they watching? And the mainstream fan doesn't know where to go to air their complaints or doesn't care enough to do so because they actually have lives something McMahon refuses to have because he lives inside the wrestling bubble. In any event, I fear the future of the business in general if this is unchecked and unmoderated at some level. What are your thoughts? Do you believe that more needs to be done about the Velveteen, Velveteen Dream Saga? Do you believe that Vince McMahon is hurting the business more than he has in previous times? Comment below. Also, if there's stories or review series that you'd like to see, comment below and would love to see you interact with us about who you would like to see interviewed on the channel. Obviously, no WWE talent allowed because Vince is too scared to allow his talent to have a voice of their own for fear they might say something negative about the company. Until, la until later and until next time, keep your feet on the ground, your mind in the moment. Until next time, everybody.